For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning somebody else. You know, that's the way a lot of Christians interpret it. It's never themselves. I am to thank God for the trials because there's a purpose in God allowing a trial in my life. I am to thank God for his provisions of grace. Everything we receive is a gift from Almighty God who loves us so very much that he has promised to take care of us even as he takes care of the birds of the air. There is nothing that God doesn't take care of when it's his children that's at stake. Over many years, the word of God has come time after time as we celebrated Thanksgiving to individuals who thank God once a year and they forget to thank him every single day. You get up and you breathe air. Thank God that there's air to breathe. God gives that. You get sunshine. You get rain. We're thanking God for the rain that just came because we were in a drought. Until you don't have something, you don't recognize how much it means to you. Wells cannot be filled without rain. The Word of God tells us that everything has a purpose under the sun, and that purpose is to bring praise to God Almighty. Let's think for a moment of these few individuals from England. They were very much in desire to worship God as they chose, not as England chose them to worship God. So they took out and they went in a boat. Now in those days, boats were not exactly comfortable. Neither were boats uh, very, very accurate. In fact, in those days, the average individual thought that if you sailed in a certain direction, you'd fall off the earth because they believed the earth was square, even though the word of God tells us that it was round. They thought it was square, and so they worried about that. But these Englishmen were Christians. They desired with all of their heart to have a country where they could worship God as God dictated it to them. So it says they sold their possessions, all of their possessions, and agreed to work for seven years to establish a colony and to pay for their passage. I want you to see as I give you a little idea of these pilgrims that they weren't the average Christian. They were Christians that were willing to give up all in order to worship God as they chose to worship God. So they not only sold their possessions, and agreed to work for seven years, but they entered a ship that had no heat and no plumbing. Do you know what it's like to not have plumbing? Well, they did. How about heat? It was cold, and it was raw, and you had to make a decision, this was going to be worth it, even if you died while on that ship, you were going to seek to worship God in the way that God had led you to seek it. After about two months of sailing on the North Atlantic, it says, this amazing band of 102 people put in first at what is now called Provincetown, and it's in Massachusetts. Bradford, a very important person, and if you study that history in this time, wrote in his diary that they fell on their knees and thanked God for bringing them across the ocean safely. It was not a comfortable trip, but it was worth it. It was worth it to these Christians.
How worth it is it to you to serve God and go through hardship in order to maintain freedom to worship Jesus Christ? I don't know about you in the last election, but I was doing a lot of praying. I knew that if it went the wrong way, there'd be chaos in our nation. And a lot of people began to pray, oh God, take over our nation again. And keep on praying because God is fulfilling that. So Bradford said, when they finally entered onto the land, they didn't just do their own thing. They fell on their knees and gave praise to Almighty God that had brought them over. Now, shortly after they arrived, it says, sickness broke out, and in the first two or three months, half the pilgrims died. Do you understand? And when they had the opportunity to go back on the ship and go back to England, the half that remained said, we want to stay. Even if it meant their death, they were willing to pay the price to worship God as they chose, not as somebody else chose. How much are you desiring to worship God, would you give up your property to worship God? Would you give up your wealth, if you have any, to worship God? Would you give up your health to worship God? How much do you have that desire within you? They had that desire within them. And if they did not stay, we would not be here today. Faithful pilgrims faithful to the call of God for their lives. Now, what did these pilgrims teach? And this is what I want you to see in the first half of this message. What did they teach that kept them wanting to serve God no matter what the cost? First, on the board, first the pilgrims left us an example of their deep unwavering religious convictions. They left us an ex example of their deep, unwavering religious convictions. You think of that. They didn't waver. They had convictions that they were going to die to protect if it was necessary. I find that uh, that's, not at, that's not really in the church of Jesus Christ in many circles today. People, if a church gets accosted by the enemy in some way, they go to another church. They don't want to be in the battle. Now, I'm talking about a church that's serving Jesus Christ and is getting slammed for it by certain people in the nation they're in. Or if it means that they're going to be stoned to death. They, they give up and they just go home. Whatever the case, my friends, we need the convictions of uh, the Pilgrim Fathers. We need that kind of conviction. They believed, and I quote, in Jesus Christ and his gospel. You wouldn't hear that in our public schools today. They do not teach about the pilgrims and what they believed in. They simply forget about that. And thank God there's being something done about it. We're trying to get people to have school choice so that they can go to a Christian school and learn these things that the general population don't even know about. Do you have such a faith in Jesus Christ that you'll be willing to lay your life on the, on the slab in order to maintain that in your community? They found fulfillment in Jesus Christ, it says, and they found purpose in their life. Not only did they believe in Jesus Christ, if you go and you study what they believed in, but 
they had fulfillment in Jesus Christ, and it gave them a purpose, and they established that colony, even though it was difficult work for them. In our day, many people seem to believe little or nothing because many of them don't even know little or nothing. Number two, second, the pilgrims left us an example of a disciplined life or a disciplined living style. A disciplined living. The pilgrim fathers were Puritans, very religious, very godly, who were ready to order everything by the word of God. Their personal lives they would order by the word of God. They would order their worship by the word of God. They would order their churches and their meetings by the word of God. Their business affairs by the word of God. Political views and recreation all ordered by the word of God according to the commandments of the Bible. You look into the history of America and you find the early states said you couldn't even run for office unless you were a born-again believer. You see, we've come a long way from that point. They frown at people who are Christians, but then nobody could be in office that was not a Christian or avowed the things that were Christian principles. They lived a strict and closely regulated life. The person that did not want to do that became alien from the community for they they knew that if they didn't live by the principles of the word of God, then the colony would end up in a mess and it would be dangerous things. They disciplined by the word of God. A hundred years later, Jonathan Edwards, and again, a great man of God, wrote of the pilgrims, hear what he wrote. The practice of religion is not only their business at certain seasons, but the business of their lives. Let me read it for the people that are watching again by television or internet. The practice of religion is not only their business at certain seasons. Certain seasons mean when it's convenient, when everyone else is doing it, but the business of their life, they lived according to the strict word of the living God. They didn't mind being called narrow. You know, today, if somebody calls you a narrow Christian because you believe that there's no other way but through Jesus Christ to be saved, it, it, it becomes something that you shy away from if you're not convinced that that is the only way. They were very happy if someone called them narrow. Listen to what they simply would repeat to them. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads to life, and few there be that find it. I want to be called a narrow-minded Christian, and that simply means I live by the word of the living God. That's exactly what these pilgrims had Maybe they had some problems, but they had a lot of blessings because they walked according to the word of the living God. What a contrast between the conduct of the pilgrims and the permissiveness of our day. Think about that. We are so permissive in the church of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about this church necessarily. I'm talking about all churches that proclaim the word of God. There is a permissive spirit. Let them live their way and we can live our way. 
and we won't try to proselyte them so that they will want to live our way. Uh, everyone has a religion. Let them live according to that religion, for all religions lead to the same place. That's the lie of Satan. There are many people that go to churches all over our land and all over our world, and they're heading for hell, and if they die, they will be surprised at the place they end up. There is a narrow way for us to end up in heaven, and it is through faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So the pilgrims who were Puritans, they didn't mess with that they stated the word of God and they've got a bad name in some circles because they told the truth they told the truth the pilgrims knew that the life of faith is a struggle you know I I was amazed as I was growing up how the life of a missionary was kind of Pedal is wonderful. People are just waiting to receive Christ. And then I got with some missionaries, and they said, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. All over the world, there are pessimistic people. There are people that say, we will not have him to be our God. During the tribulation, they will not want God, and they will call rather the mountains to come down on them because they don't want God in their life. They love their attitude and their lifestyle. These pilgrims were not like that. I want to emulate the pilgrims, not the atheists, not the ungodly. I want to let people know I believe in the same God that they believed in and I proclaim that same God. The apostle Paul knew it. He said, I have learned through the struggles I went through, and he went through many, to be content. I've learned to be content in whatever circumstance I may be. How content are we in our circumstances? How content? content are we I find there's a lot of Christianity that has not even the measure of contentment that they're talking about Paul said I have learned and every single believer through trials and tribulations through sickness through all kinds of troubles has to learn to be content because it's not a natural thing to be content it's a learning from God's teaching and God's strength number three thirdly the pilgrims left us an example of freedom under law freedom under law they believe that every person's home was his castle and even the king could not cross the threshold without permission. They took that into the new land, and they lived with that principle. My home is my home, and you've got to be invited in, and you've got to be accepting what I believe if you're going to be part of my family, my situation, my circumstance. Where is it that we will meet with many, many of our relatives during Thanksgiving and some of them do not hold to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? And we have to keep silent because we don't want to cause a problem. I tell you, cause the problem. They're heading for hell if they don't know Jesus. Cause the problem, but do it in wisdom. Don't let an opportunity to minister Jesus Christ in some way, some manner, stop you from being sold out to Jesus Christ. Around our table, we're going to have each one tell what they're thankful for. It's all about Jesus. Jesus. 
It's all about God's grace. It's all about God's mercy. It has nothing to do with luck. There is no Christian that lives by luck. They live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Almighty God. They were under the law of the colony, but they lived in freedom under that law. You are under the law, if you're in America, of the United States government, but you live in total subservience to Jesus Christ. If the government tells you not to worship, you worship anyways. During the COVID epidemic, this church was never closed. The government would not begin to control the opening or the closing of God's house. It was open because God never told us to close it. We took precautions, of course, but it's coming out now that it wasn't necessary. It's coming out now that you wear a mask and it didn't protect you. It was the government trying to control you. And in some communities, they would not let you go to church. If you did, you'd have to pay a high price. My friends, are we willing to pay a high price if the government is contrary to the word of God? I'm too old to change my ways. I'm going to be faithful to God's word. And some of you are certainly too old to change because you have been faithful so long. Continue to be faithful to God's holy word. The pilgrims were faithful and it cost them. The fourth, the fourth, and it's the fourth example. They left us the example of a people who had been so who had keen social concern. They left us an example of a people who had keen social concern. They cared about their community. They cared about where their community was heading. They cared about their community learning the word of God and being faithful to the word of the living God. They cared about anything that would cause that community to disintegrate or to have less of a conviction of faith because it would soon erode into a very dangerous situation. They believed that every person was made in the image of God. They believed that and that each one was of infinite value to God and worth all that could be spoken to God Almighty. It was worthy. They were worth to God. We have killed more babies in America and God says they were worth being born. I sent them. I had a plan for them. And you slaughtered them. And America, for the most part, kept quiet about it. And when they didn't keep quiet about it, they ended up in jail. If we could elect a person by a landslide in our last election, we could have stood with those that were against abortion for any reason. My dear friends, I understand abortion if the mother's health is in danger. I understand abortion if something's wrong with the child and you can prove it. But I cannot comprehend any Christian saying abortion is the will of God. We have taken abortion and we have said, keep silent about it, you'll lose church members in a lot of churches. We've taken homosexual lifestyles and we have been quiet about it as a church because we did not want to lose people in our ministry that believed to leave them alone. 
it costs to preach the gospel, and that's part of the reason we're not a huge church. We give the word of God to people, and we stand by the word of God. In that, we're like the Puritans. And that, my friends, is the example God is putting before us today. The pilgrims knew that they were citizens of heaven. While they were citizens of this earth, they were citizens of heaven, and they must follow the government of heaven rather than the government of mankind. Number five, the pilgrims have left us an example of commitment to great principles. Commitment to great principles. Are you committed to the principles laid down in the word of God? Are you committed to prayer? As a principle of Almighty God, pray without ceasing. Do you pray very much? Are you committed to uh, church attendance and doing it much the more as you see the day of Christ's return coming? Are you committed to it? They, They met almost every day. They needed to. Do not we need to come together in some fashion every single day? whether it's through the internet or whether it's through some other way, are we really committed to letting the body of Christ we're part of help us and support us as we try to live according to the word of God? You and I can't live it alone. We will be defeated if we don't come together and come together as much as necessary in order to maintain our walk with Jesus Christ. We cool off too easily if we only go into the Word of God once a week. And there are Christians, and they're not coming to church every day, and I understand that, but they don't even get into the Word of God every day. And I cannot understand that. The pilgrims had constant studies of the word of God in the colony. Constant studies. They taught us that. And yet, who's telling that principle to the world today? Very few preachers. Number six. The pilgrim fathers were evangelists who set an example by sharing their spiritual and material blessings with others. They would go and they would share all of that with the Indians. Some people want to make the pilgrims a bad group of people that put down the Indians. I can tell you when they brought the gospel to the Indians, it was not bad at all. Nobody's perfect, but I can tell you, they presented Jesus Christ to those Indians, and if they had not, some of them that we know not of would not have been saved. The grace of God made them evangelists. Wherever they went, they shared their principles from the Word of God. 